everyone, my name is Amrita and I am going to be giving you an introduction to ionic and covalent bonding using the InSpirit platform on the Oculus Quest. So as you can see, we're in the special lab. Um, we have two atomic dispensers. We have the periodic table over here. And then we have this list of elements. So today we're going to be learning about ionic and covalent bonding, just the basics of it. Um, so covalent bond um, traditionally happens between two non-metals. And so you can see over here in the periodic table, the right side of the periodic table has the non-metals and then everything on the left side of the periodic table consists of metals. And so two non-metals generally form covalent bonds. And so let's try and see if we can find two non-metals that we can try bonding together. So there's carbon. So let's pick up carbon. And carbon can bond with chlorine, which is also on the right side of the periodic table. So we can see both the atoms over here to my right. So this is chlorine. Um, as you can see, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven electrons in its outer valent shell. I'm just going to place it here. And then this is carbon. And we can see one, two, three, four electrons in its outer valent shell. Now this isn't an exact replica of the structure. Um, but it's just showing you the electrons in the outer valence shell of those elements. So we have a question that just popped up in front of us. Is the bond between these elements covalent or ionic? So since both of these are on the right side of the periodic table, we know that two nonmetals only form covalent bonds. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. We're correct. So now we need to go ahead and actually form these covalent bonds. Now, covalent bond is a bond where electrons are shared between elements. Now, as you can see, each um, element, we have all the electrons over here. So this is the electrons that are only part of chlorine. And then we have overlapping atomic orbitals. And this is kind of where we're trying to form that covalent bond. This is the bond itself. So we actually need one carbon electron and one chlorine electron to form this bond. And the reason is because all elements are trying to form a stable octet of electrons in their outer valence shell. So each element is trying to get eight electrons in their outer valence shell to become stable. And so this chlorine currently has seven electrons in its outer valence shell, and it needs one more to become stable. So we're gonna grab one carbon electron and place it there. And then we're going to grab one chlorine electron because they have to share. And so now this chlorine atom has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons in its outer valence shell. And so it's currently stable. The carbon element, on the other hand, only has one, two, three, four, five. So we actually need three more electrons in this element for it to become stable. And that's actually why the compound is CCl4. Since carbon needs four more electrons to form a stable octet in its outer valence shell, it's going to need four electrons from chlorine to become stable. And so that's why this compound in itself is stable. So I'm going to grab one of the chlorine electrons over here, and then the carbon electron. So now this is stable. This chlorine has eight electrons. The carbon still only has six electrons, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab another chlorine electron and the carbon electron. And then let's grab another chlorine electron, carbon electron. And so now, as you can see, the carbon also has eight electrons in its outer valence shell. And if you're a little confused, I'm going to be going more into covalent bonding in future videos. This is just a basic introduction. And so from this, you can see that covalent bonds are bonds where electrons are shared 
between the elements. So I'm going to go back and hit reset. And let's try forming an ionic bond. So an ionic bond is generally formed between a metal and a non-metal. And so like we said before, the left side of the periodic table is filled with metals and the right side is filled with non-metals. So let me go ahead and pick a metal. Let's do Na. Perfect. And let's pick one of the non-metals. And so chlorine was the non-metal we used last time. I'm going to go ahead and use that again. Perfect. So the formula is NaCl. So over here, we can see that sodium only has one extra electron in its outer valence shell. I'm going to go ahead and drop that there. And then chlorine, as we saw before, has seven electrons in its outer valence shell. So the question just popped up. We already know that this is an ionic bond because it's between a metal and a non-metal. Now, in ionic bonds, electrons are not shared. One element actually gives up its electron. It basically donates its electron to the other element to form this ionic bond. And like I said before, we're trying to hit a stable octet. So we're trying to make sure that the outer valence shell of the element only has eight electrons. Now we see that sodium has only one extra electron in its outer valence shell, and chlorine has seven. So the easiest thing to do is to grab one electron from sodium and to donate it to chlorine. So now chlorine actually has eight electrons in its outer valence shell, and you can see the ionic bond forming. And we just saw that sodium got smaller, and then eight electrons popped up. And that's because um, sodium basically gave up an electron from its outer valence shell, and now its outer valence shell has actually gone down um, by one. And we're going to go more into this in the atomic orbitals lessons, but as you can see, sodium over here um, has basically given up one of its outer shells from this row and has gone up. And so, as you can see here, the sodium chloride formation is complete. So I'll be going more in depth into ionic and covalent bonding, and we'll be talking about the different valence shells and trying to understand um, why what you just saw happened, and I'll be debriefing you on that as well in future videos. Like I said before, I'm Amrita, and I'm currently using the Inspirit platform to teach you some chemistry on the Oculus Quest, so feel free to subscribe for more videos. I hope to see you again soon.